Happy Monday. We get go back to building robots. Let's talk about sensors. <clears throat> Modern Robotics has seven sensors to choose from currently, and they are a growing range of sensors. All Modern Robotics sensors come with standard 5 volt digital, analog, or I2C connections. Those can be connected to your core device interface, your core Spartan controller, or any other board that you have, like the Beagle Bones, Arduino, or Hazard Pies, uh, because they come with that standard connector. And the connectors on these sensors even come ready with a 0.1 inch spacing contacts, so then you can plug and play. The first sensor I'm going to show you is the touch sensor. It has a red button on the front. When you push it in, it will read back true or yes or one or five volts, um, saying that it is being touched. And then you can also know it's being released. There's a LED inside, so when you touch it, that LED will illuminate, showing you physical feedback that uh, it is being touched. So when you're debugging, it'll help you out a lot there. The next sensor we'll look at is the optical distance sensor. The optical distance sensor measures proximity. It's the next step up from the touch sensor because you can measure proximity to objects without actually touching them. So it will measure from about 7, 13 centimeters away up to about half a centimeter away. As you get closer, the value is going to get higher. You'll get values between 0 and 1023. So you have 1,024 possible uh, readings that are coming back to you when that something in front of you is getting closer to the sensor. It will also change depending on the intensity or reflectivity of that surface. So if you go from something dark to something light at the same distance, that value will also increase. So you can do that for things like line following, things like wall following, counting number of objects, um, measuring proximity or reflectivity. Great for this sensor. The next sensor is one step up from there. This sensor is a combination of ultrasonic and optical distance sensor. This is a I2C sensor, meaning that you can ask it multiple different things. You can say, what is your ultrasonic reading? It'll come back with ultrasonic. Or what is your optical distance sensor reading? It'll come back with optical distance sensor reading. We combine these two sensors into one because they have different ranges. So the uh, ultrasonic sensor is good from five centimeters forward, so you can measure from five to 255 centimeters. The optical distance sensor is good from zero to seven centimeters. So those two ranges overlap. So no matter where you are within seven feet or two meters, um, you're, you're golden. You can, you'll be able to measure how far away the object is in front of you. The next two sensors we'll talk about kind of at the same time. We have a integrating gyro and we have a uh, compass sensor. The integrating gyro tells you your heading based on inertia. So when you turn the robot, it knows how fast you're turning how, for how long. So it can tell you the heading of your robot. The compass sensor does the same thing, but using Earth's magnetic field. Um, the integrating gyro, because it's using inertia, the, the integrated heading may drift at about one degree per minute, which is pretty slow. Uh, for FTC, you're only using it for 30 seconds. You're in autonomous mode. It's great for that application. The compass sensor, because it's using Earth's magnetic field, needs to be removed from paramagnetic materials, from motors, from servos, from power wires, by about six inches in order to be accurate. Otherwise, the magnetic field of your robot will interfere with Earth's magnetic field, and you won't actually be reading Earth's magnetic field, you'll be reading the nearest paramagnetic material. So there are uh, a couple things to keep in mind when using each one of these, and you'll have to decide which one works best for your application, but they both read your heading very well. The compass sensor can also measure tilt. So if your robot is tipped, you'll be able to measure how far tipped your robot is. The integrating gyro measures how fast your robot is tipping. You can measure rate rotation in all three axes. So if you're going up a ramp, you can measure how fast your robot is changing uh, angle. The last two sensors we have to talk about today are the IR seeker and the IR locator. Both of these detect the direction and intensity of infrared emitting objects or a IR light source. Those come in two forms for modern robotics. We have the IR ball. This is awesome for things like robot soccer. We also have the IR beacon. It's just a stationary source of infrared light. This guy has been used in FTC games in the past. This one is still being used in WRO football. Very popular around the world. The IR Seeker sees about 90 degrees in front of it. Um, 
and it's it's very accurate. You can tell very precisely where that source is coming from. The IR locator can see the infrared source in 360 degrees. So no matter where that infrared source is around the seeker, the locator, you'll be able to see which direction that source is coming from and the intensity. But the accuracy is only five degrees, so a combination of these two sensors is fabulous. Sometimes the length of a cable coming on the sensor, especially for you FTC teams, may not reach where you need the sensor to go. Especially for touch sensors, optical distance sensors, you may need to extend the length of this cable so that you can reach your core device interface. Excellent, we've got you covered. We have two sets, two flavors of sensor extension cables. We have a four wire extension for I2C sensors and a three wire extension for analog and digital sensors. Um, there is a end where you can insert the sensor into and then you double the length of your sensor and you can connect them all these together so you can extend your sensor as far as you need it to go. Sometimes you may want to use a sensor that we don't carry, and that's fine. Uh, we have you covered as well. So if you have your own sensor you want to connect, since it's all standard 5 volt, I2C, digital, or analog, you can connect our sensor pigtail. It has the connector to go into the core device interface or Spartan controller. And on the other end, you have raw wire. It is tinned, so you can just heat that up and solder it onto the sensor you want to attach. Um, it's good, it's ready to go, it's beautiful. It comes in the same color configuration that way as all of your other sensors, so you know what cable is uh, for which connection. That's it, those are Monrobox's seven sensors we currently have for you. Uh, we have more sensors coming out very soon. If you're at the FTC World Championships, you may know about our very bright sensor that's coming out soon. I'm super excited about that one and I hope you are too. Um, it'll be released in the coming weeks. I'll let you know as soon as it gets here. The sensor pages also have some more resources on them. So this is just gonna be a quick overview to let you know generally what each sensor does, but they can all take some more looking into. Some have videos of their own. Some have uh, training materials as far as lessons and activities at modernrobotics.edu.com. You can go check those out. We are growing our libraries of sensors that you can learn about on that website as well.